everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today I'm going to be giving you your very first look at the soon to be released Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro 3D printer. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jesse, didn't Elegoo just recently release the Neptune 3 just a few months ago? And yes, you're correct, and it's a fantastic FDM 3D printer, and the big thing that I was really impressed by with the Neptune 3, not only was the print quality, but it had auto mesh bed leveling, plus a slightly larger build volume than what you find on the Neptune 2s. And I'm happy to say that the Neptune 3 Pro has all of that and a good bit more, and this is such an impressive machine to work with, and it is stupidly quiet. So the Neptune 3 Pro definitely looks somewhat similar to the Neptune 3. However, there are a few aesthetic design tweaks that have been made on this machine, but the overall build volume is the exact same between the Neptune 3 and the Neptune 3 Pro. It also has auto mesh bed leveling, just like you're gonna find on the Neptune 3. However, where it starts to differentiate from the Neptune 3 is that this is the first Neptune printer that comes with a direct drive dual gear extruder. This means that you can very very easily print now with soft materials like TPU on the Neptune 3 Pro. This is also the first Neptune printer coming standard with dual Z rods installed on the back of the machine, which means you're gonna have a really stable printing experience. Also, you're never gonna have that issue where the axis here just slips and falls when you're not actively printing, which was always a kind of a thing that slightly annoyed me with some of my other Neptune printers. Also with that direct drive extruder, you have dual fans to make sure that the parts that you're printing are properly cooled while the plastic's laying down. And similar to the Neptune 3, the Pro version is also sporting this touchpad interface that has a old school telephone wire tethering it to the printer, but it also has the added benefit that it's magnetically secured in place. And since the Neptune Pro has that direct drive extruder, you're gonna have your spool holder center mounted on the top so that it can more easily feed filament straight down into the extruder. Plus it's also got this swiveling filament runout sensor that you can either use or not use. And I really like that on the interface now, you can completely enable or disable the filament runout sensor. The Neptune 3 Pro also has the dual belt tensioners on the X and Y, and it also has that same magnetic textured PEI sheet that you're able to print directly on. Your files are gonna be front loaded on a micro USB, which is kind of standard now with these Neptune style 3D printers. On that touchscreen interface, which is really easy and straightforward and pretty responsive to work with, there are lots of different options when it comes to actually setting up your pre-default preheat settings for the different materials that you wanna be printing with, everything from PLA to ABS to TPU to PETG. And they also have a number of different other functions that you're able to go in and enable or disable when it comes to working with the printer, everything from the beeping sound that the interface is making to whether or not you want to have the power loss resume functionality enabled, or like I mentioned previously, the filament runout sensor enabled or disabled. And the setup of this machine might have been the simplest out of all of the different Neptune 3D printers that I've worked with. This literally took, I don't know, 15 minutes. I probably could have done this even less if I wasn't trying to record the whole thing. And what I really loved is how simple the wire assembly was on the back of the machine. So once you get the printer fully assembled, you have to make all of those wire connections. It's really straightforward and simple how they've laid those out. The printer's also rocking an LED light bar along the top panel that you can enable or disable at any point in time mid print so you can get a better look at what you're printing. Now this is fantastic for someone like myself who likes to create videos of the things that I'm printing. However, it could be great for anybody that's just wanting a better look at what they're printing in a darker room. And one of the biggest features that I haven't mentioned yet is just how quiet this new machine is. It is unbelievably quiet quiet compared to basically every other 3D printer that I've ever worked with. It's so quiet, in fact, that I was actually printing with it up on this same table while I recorded another video about one of the loudest printers that I've ever worked with. So this is a really great new addition to the Neptune series of machines, especially if you're planning on setting up a number of these and you wanna have a more quiet space, you're definitely gonna still hear the fan. There's a low hum of the fan while it's printing, but it is 
so utterly quiet compared to almost any other 3D printer that I've worked with. So enough about the machine, let's take a look at some of those prints. The very first thing I went off and printed is a tool holder for the printer that's included with the printer on the SD card. Thank you, thank you Elegoo, because I literally will run off and slice one of those for every single one of my Neptune machines. And this one's specifically designed to fit on the back carriage of the Neptune 3 Pro. The print looks fantastic. I am wondering what the heck one of these little notches is for in the center. There's like a larger space there. I'm just not entirely sure what's supposed to go there, but everything else, all of your tools fit perfectly on this and is nicely held and convenient on the back of the machine for you to easily access when you need them. Oh, and the tool holder was printed with Elegoo's blue PLA. The next thing that I went off and printed is this absolutely massive magneto bust by Eastman and it was printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height and just looks absolutely amazing in this dual color matter hackers filament here. Very minimal supports were needed specifically just for the helmet area here to support the helmet. And again, details on this are as expected looking absolutely amazing. And just for comparison, I used my Neptune 2S, which I own way too many of. It's a very budget friendly 3D printer, especially if you're looking at setting up a big farm of printers. So I went off and printed a spare head. This is one without the helmet. And Eastman also included this cool little head stand for all of the extra heads that you might be wanting to print. Now, he also had a whole bunch of different variants that I need to look into printing that included bearded options for Magneto. And as you might know, I'm a huge Magneto fan. So next I printed this Gengar character from Pokemon. I think that's how you pronounce it. I have no idea. I never really was that big into Pokemon, uh, but this is from Filament Folly. And unfortunately I did run into a few small issues while printing this. And I think it just had to do with my supports that I didn't have the hands properly supported enough. And I ended up with a small print issue on both of those hands. But the other supports that were on the bottom, everything else looks really nice and clean on this particular print. I then wanted to print something fun that articulates, so I found this brand new Yeti file from Flexi Factory, and it printed perfectly here on the Neptune 3 Pro. I did use a, like a, it's a bluish tint of rainbow filament, and unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot of color transition that was going on with this particular print, but everything articulates wonderfully on this. Everything adhered perfectly, zero supports needed for this, and just having z like no issues whatsoever with this direct drive extruder. And by the way, it's so easy to load and unload filament with this. Absolutely loving it. Did I mention this little guy stands as well? He's too freaking cute. And since the Neptune 3 Pro has that direct drive extruder, that means that we can again work with some flexible materials. And I was so excited to bust out a roll of TPU and start printing some things here on this machine. And the very first thing I went off and printed was this very quick 10 minute print of this cable cord manager. Super flexible and durable here that I was able to print in no time and then uh, keep my cables better managed here around the studio. Then I found this TPU Fidget Infinity Cube by Bemco over on Printables and this is so cool that I'm able to print something this soft and malleable and it's just a fidget toy that you can keep like squaring up and rotating and rolling around. You've probably seen something like this when you were a kid and it's just really cool to be able to run off and print something like this and it'd be super soft and squishy. And I also went off and printed this paper bag, but it's not just any paper bag. It's a 3D scan of a Taco Bell bag that I printed in this flexible TPU material. It is such a fun print to play around with. This took seven hours and 30 minutes more or less to print. It didn't turn out perfect. There there are some areas where the layers separated there within the vase mode. I think I'm gonna try and reprint this with two walls, no infill and no top infill and see how it goes. This is a really fun 3D printed file that you can find over on printables and highly recommend trucking it out, especially if you wanna try messing around with these flexible 
3D printed materials. I did also want to take a minute to say thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video and sending along the Neptune 3 Pro for me to make a video and show it off to you guys and see what this machine can do. This will be releasing here some point here later in the month. I don't have an exact release date yet. I also don't have an exact price point for it yet, but I believe it's going to be around $250, $230 $250. to $250. Fingers crossed it's not more than that. Apologies, Elegoo, if it is. If you're interested in more details on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro, I'll have links somewhere down below that will hopefully guide you to more information about the printer. <laughs> Even though at the time of posting this, I don't think it's up and available yet, but hopefully will be soon. If you're interested in the Neptune 3 or the other Neptune printers, I'll also have links to those down below. And while this video is definitely not a review since it is being sponsored by Elegoo and I'm more or less just showing off the machine, I did want to provide some constructive feedback about this machine that I would like to see updated in the future. And I think the biggest issue that I have with the machine is something that could potentially be fixed with a firmware update to the machine. And that's just when the machine is powered on and just sitting here and running, the fan is on. So I would love it if there was a way to just disable that fan. If I'm not printing anything, can I have that fan turned off? Even though it's a very faint hum and you might not even be able to hear it while I'm talking here, it's still there up and running. Ho hopefully you can hear that. <laughs> also, Elegoo, if you're watching this, well, what am I talking about? Elegoo, you're watching this. Hear me out. I want a bigger Neptune printer. Same machine, just give me like 300 by 300. Just a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. But outside of that, I don't have a whole heck of a lot of complaints about this machine. It's just printing so well, and I'm so happy with the experience that I've had with it so far, and I can't wait to play around now with more of these flexible materials now that we have a direct drive extruder on a Neptune 3D printer. I also wanted to mention a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos here on the YouTubes. If you're interested in my 3D printer settings, you can find those in my Patreon. And speaking of profiles, I'm in the process of converting my Simplify 3D profiles, which yes, I know no one uses, over into Super Slicer or Prusa Slicer. And if you have any tips on working with a direct drive extruder that you want to share, let me know down below because I'm still relatively new with working with these types of extruders. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all. I'll see you next time. Bye now.